Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at all of the tacticals and where they go on the tier list for PvP for the Jedi Knight class. Um, we're going to go through the tacticals, we're going to take a look at the ability, and then give them a rating and kind of explain a little bit about them and why they got that rating. So first up, everybody's favorite, the Fell Splice Sheens. Um, it is basically what makes Marauders broken. So it is... It is a, an ability where after they activate Transcendence, it finishes the cooldown on Force Camouflage. Essentially, it gives Mara's the ability to stealth in and out more than any class in the game. Um, it completely breaks the game balance right now. They really need to look at it, um, especially in uh, solo ranked, it completely destroys it. I mean, if this tactical didn't exist, Mara's would not be as strong as they are. Um, it's a very big crutch that they're relying on. Um, it takes a lot of the skill and usage of DCDs out and the effective rotation of them. So right now, currently it's an S tier. Um, it's probably the strongest tactical in the game right now. It is that good. Um, if there was a tier above S, it would be probably the only tactical in there. Next, we have Hidden Power. So Hidden Power is Force Camouflage, generates two focus per second. Um, that's not good in PvP. It's straight at the bottom of the list. It's in Z tier. Um, it doesn't really do anything. Um, you really shouldn't be starved for focus ever in PvP. Um, next, we have Grit Teeth. So Grit Teeth reduces the cooldown of Saber Board by two seconds whenever you're attacked. Funnily enough, this actually, I've tested it, actually works for Sentinels and Guardians. So it actually works for both. Um, it's not as bad as you would think, especially if you're going to be focused a lot. The problem is, is that Saber Ward has such a long cooldown already that you don't really, you're not really getting this off multiple times in a fight. So it's going to go into C tier for now. Next, we have Undying Cloak. So taking damage while rebuke is active reduces the cooldown of guarded by the force by five seconds per hit. Cannot occur more than once every two seconds. This actually isn't bad. Um, it really isn't. It really has its situational uses, especially when we're talking about mainly about eight on this channel. Um, the fact is you can get more guarded by the force, and if you're getting hit a lot, it'll really reduce the cooldown a lot. So it's pretty average. Um, you could definitely actually run it. The problem is there's so many things better than it, it kind of gets overlooked. If the fell wasn't in, I believe that more classes would run it. Next, we have Shard of Mortis. So the new tactical for 7.1. Dealing damage with Blade Rush grants a stack of Hyper up to a max of three stacks. For each stack you get, your crit critical chances increase by 25%. Um, and it gives some bonuses to focus and some things like that and resource generation. Uh, this basically makes Fury playable now. Um, not Fury, I'm sorry, but it makes um, Combat playable. So Combat Carnage, it makes it playable. It's uh, it's another crutch kind of tactical though, and I'm not a big fan of tackles that really have to like be involved to make things crutches. But it is strong. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Without this, without this, it wouldn't be playable. Um, we're gonna put this so far at the top of eight tier. It just completely changes the way the spec plays. Without it, the spec is just not viable. Next, we have Endetus. Um, precision is always active, but only gives 50% armor penetration, so it's for Carnage. Um, it's not very good, frankly. 50% armor penetration doesn't mean that much in PvP. Um, it's going to C tier. Um, it's probably worse than Grit Teeth, to be honest. It's not something I would look to run. Next, we have the Prosecution. So, Clashing Blash is now affected by Force Clarity. Again, um, force clarity of the stacks. I know they just got buffed, but they're still not that great. Um, you're just not going to be using this a lot. So this is going down to our D tier. It's just not something that's very good, very consistent. And that's a lot of things with PvP. It needs to be good. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be something that happens over and over again to really be good. Next on our list is we have Malt. We'll have the Tome. Oh, got out of order. We have the Tome of Unyielding Blades. So again, this is your force sweep, causes your next blade rush to do damage up to eight enemy targets near the primary area. Um, it's a carnage tactical. Why? I don't know. This really doesn't do anything. Carnage is not an AOE spec. This is probably even worse than hidden power. This is going straight to the bottom of the list. 
Next, we have an interesting one. So, Memorial Mask. Um, when Merciless Slash deals damage to the effect of an enemy affected by Force Melt, it triggers a burst of damage up to eight targets around them. Um, it is situationally useful. It is a lot of fluff damage for Annihilation. Um, so, basically, you do your uh, Zen Force Melt, then you hit with your Annihilate, and it does an AoE. Um, Annihilation just has better tacticals, but... It's not terrible, so it's definitely going to probably beat tier. Um, definitely probably better than Undying. Next on our list, we have No Time for Fools. So Merciless Slash automatically kills standard and weak enemies with less than 30% health. And uh, if you kill something with less than 30% health, it resets the cooldown of Merciless Slash. The whole thing is it doesn't work in PvP. So I'm not even going to talk about it. It's garbage. Honestly, it's garbage for everything but like leveling. It's actually decent for leveling though so next we have spiteful saber so spiteful saber another annihilation uh, tactical um slash dispatch and twin saber slow refresh the duration of your cauterizes burn effects and ticks its damage um this is strong um it is very strong this is pretty much what everyone in annihilation should be running in eights as far as pvp um the fell gets a lot worse on annihilation because you're cutting some damage um so this is easy s tier Next, we have Thirsty Blade, um, another Annihilation Tactical. So, Blade Barrage deals 5% more damage for each burn stacked on the target up to 25%. It's a DPS increase. Um, it just falls short of like what Spiteful Saber can do. If the percentages was higher, it would be better. It's still not terrible. It's still something you can definitely run and get by with. Um, I don't know exactly what the calculations are, but it is a considerable less damage than what Spiteful Saber is. So, it is a solid B tier. Um... Yeah, it's probably worse than the Undying to have a more guarded by the force. It's probably worse, so it's somewhere in the B tier. Next, we have Carterized Coronary. So, Concentrated Slice causes its target to burn. Um, pretty simple. Uh, if the Fell wasn't a thing, this is probably what combat would be running. Um, this or the Undying. I mean, they're pretty close. I would put it a little bit ahead. Just because it happens all the time. It's something that's consistent and can always happen. So we put it a little bit ahead of Undying. Um, next we have Enrage Crush. So Focus Burst and Force Sweep. Detonate Force Sweep. Dealing in Force Exhaustion's remaining damage to eight enemies around the target. Um, it's AoE for Fury. Eh. Doesn't really need AoE. So we're going to put this down in D tier. Uh, actually, it's probably more like in C tier. It's probably better than Grit Teeth, honestly, with the way Grit Teeth is set up. It's because it's consistent. It's not as good as Thirsty Blade. It's not as good as anything like the Memorial's Mask or anything. So we'll put it there in solid in C tier. Next, we have Force Barter. Consecrated Slide refunds one additional focus after it hits, but refunds all the focus if you haven't fallen to zero. This is absolute garbage. I mean... This is, might even be worse. I don't know. To put it somewhere down here. They're both terrible. Next, we have Preserverance. So, using Zealous Sleep with Force Clarity causes it to critically hit. Why? Another useless tactical. Throw that down in D tier. Uh, Rancor's Tales, our next one. So, activating Save Reward finishes the cooldown on Force Push for our Guardians. Um, the problem is Save Reward is just too high of a cooldown. I mean, if you if you, there was some way to run two tacticals and you can do this with grit teeth, maybe it would be worked, but it's just bad. Um, since it does do something, it's probably at least a little bit better than the last three. Next, we have throwing arm. So saber throw lowers the target target's accuracy by seventy percent for six seconds. Um, very good against white damage classes. The problem is not a lot of white damage classes are very good in PvP right now. Um, Marksman is pretty much trash. Um, Carnage is really the only thing it's going to counter. And since it's very situational, um, it is a strong counter. But it's so situational that it's in C tier. Next, we have a Vicious Cycle. So Whirling Blade triggers Repause. It does 30% more damage. Uh, I mean, it's okay. It's nothing to really write Helm about. It's pretty mediocre. Um, we're going to put it in C tier as well. It's not as good as Throwing Arm, just because Throwing Arm is just a direct counter. Next, we come to a big one. So, cut to pieces. Um, when a burn tick critically hits, reduces the cooldown of Vigilant Thrust by one second. 
Cut to pieces is S tier. Um, an eight cut to pieces is really good. People just aren't, people are more stacked up. This is a, this is just almost guaranteed an eights at this point with how much people are stacking and the situational unawareness that happens. So cut to pieces, easy S tier. Cut to pieces is probably better than spiteful saber actually. Next, we have Hemophilic Slash, Blade Barrage, refreshes the duration of, of Blade Storm, Overhead Slash, and pla Plasma Brands Burns on the target and ticks their damage. Um, it's okay, but again, it's nothing major, nothing really right happening. It's just kind of meh. So, I think it's a little bit better than Throwing Arm just because it's pretty consistent, but it's nothing to write home about. Next, we have Makashi Strike. So, Reposit consumes warding strikes damage reduction and grants retaliating defense increases damage reduction by 5% for 20 seconds The thing I'll say about this is it's very consistent um, It is super consistent, but it just doesn't do that much 5% um, DR for 20 seconds isn't a lot I'm um, just be given the fact that it is very consistent though and you can pull it off pretty much whenever you feel like um, We're gonna go ahead and put it to C tier um, the top of C tier, just because of how consistent, how easy it is to pull off. Next, we have Jawbreaker. Using Hilt Bash while Warding Call is active extends the duration of Warding Call by 5 seconds. Absolutely garbage. I mean, put it down here, it's probably even worse than Ranker's Tail. I mean, don't ever use it. Next, we have... Leviathan's Hide. So, Leviathan's Hide, Guardian Slash, generates... Stacks of crushing defense for every in a hit, getting 2.5 increased damage reduction per stack for 10 seconds, stacks up, stacks up to eight times. Again, it's so situational that it's gonna go in our C tier. Um, that's probably somewhere a little bit less than throwing arm. Um, somewhere in the C tier range. There are times where if you have a lot of people, you can really kind of stack it pretty quick, but a lot of times it's just kind of meh. Next, we have Joiner's Pressure, so activating Force Push on a target affected by Force Exhaustion. Grand rates Joiner's Pressure, increasing your damage dealt by 20% for 10 seconds. Um, this actually isn't that bad. It really isn't. It's a straight 20% damage debuff, damage increase for damage buff for 20 for 10 seconds. So it's pretty good. It's pretty consistent, easy to pull off. Um, probably a top of B tier. Um, it's definitely good. Just a straight 20% damage damage buff is good. Uh, next we have Sin's second amulet, so Reposit refunds one focus and finish the cooldown of s Concentrated Slice Believe it or not, this is actually rather easy to do Especially in 8s where you're gonna get a lot more focus and a lot more attacked And finish the cooldown of Concentrated Slice can um, kind of pump some AoE numbers and stuff, so It's not exactly the best damage thing ever, but it's probably somewhere in B tier um, it's Probably above Thirsty Blade, honestly. It's probably somewhere around there. Next, we have Unknowing Ancient Tech. So, Force Crush builds a Furious Power Ability Charge. Um, that's just garbage. It just doesn't happen enough. And that's the big thing with tacticals that are in our D tier. They just don't happen enough. So, garbage. We're going to put this down here. Um, it's probably not as garbage as this. Um, it's probably better than Hidden Power. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the neutrals. Um, so the first one you have is a Breath of Fresh Air. So every third activation, your basic, is stored, your basic attack restores 10% of your class resource. Um, why? You would have to basically use your basic attack to get 10% of your resource back. This might be the worst thing that I've ever seen. Next, we have Biorhythm. So dealing damage increases all healing done. Healing increases all damage done, stacks up to five times. Only one effect can be activated at a time. Believe it or not, it's actually kind of okay. It's not the like the biggest increase ever, but it's really consistent. You don't have to think about it. You just pretty much put it on and you're good to go. Um, so that is hmm, probably somewhere in C tier. Oh, you get by with using it if that's all you have. Next, we have Durasteel Wall. Successfully parrying and deflecting or dodging an attack while under 80% health. Increase your damage reduction by 1% for 5 seconds. Stacks to 3 times. It's just awful. Just There's not enough dodges and parryings. I mean, it's better than uh, a breath of fresh air, but not by much. 
Next, we have Krell's Accord. So cycles between buffing mastery, accuracy, power, defense, critical, absorb, alacrity, and shield in that order. Um, the problem with this is you don't need all of those stats. Um, it's definitely probably better than a lot of these in the D tier. Um, that's probably somewhere in C tier. I mean, at least it does something for you. At least you get something out of it, but it's not absolutely amazing. Next, we have luck always changes. So your critical chance when melee, range, tech, and force attacks. Let me just read that again. Your critical chance when melee, range, tech, and force attack is increased by 1% each second. This effect resets on a successful critical strike. So basically, it gives you, keeps on gives you an attack increase until you crit. Once you crit, it resets. Um... It just gives you more crits over time. So the it's it consistently makes your curve a little bit better. Um to always have that guaranteed crit and to have it stacking. It's probably top of C tier. It might be bottom of B. It's not exactly terrible. It definitely is better than a lot of the ones down here. So I think a top of B tier makes sense. Just because it is consistent. Um it just consistently gives you crits. So Overwhelming offense is next. Um, dealing damage increases all damage done for two seconds, stacks for five times. Again, it's solid. It's nothing to write home about. It isn't something that's gonna change. It's just a straight up DPS increase, but it's a good DPS increase. So solid beats here. Next we have reliqui reliquity of time. Man, that's a weird word. So it reduces the cooldown. On use relics by 5%. Um, no one's using on use relics, it's just as bad as these other ones. I mean, if you're using on use relics, um, sure, but it's, I don't know. I mean, some of these are just so bad or not even worth mentoring. Next, we have Rolling Boral, um, increases mastery by 5% for five seconds when a relic triggers. It's not a lot of mastery, but it's a lot better than some stuff in the D tier. Um, it's probably better than hidden power. Um, it's probably somewhere. It's in the high D tier. Um, at least it does something. It just doesn't do a lot of anything. And then finally, we have Life Warden. So taking damage below 20% health will rapidly heal you for a large amount as a 10 minute cooldown. Uh, if the cooldown was shorter, this would be really good. Um, given the fact that the, cool, the cooldown being what it is, that it's 10 minutes, it just doesn't happen enough. But the effect is still strong on certain classes, so we can put it in C tier. Um, so go ahead and comment anything you would change or anything down in the comments and like a video and everybody have a good day.